Hi everyone, it's Cindy Garcia and this is my week two presentation for the MPA 510 History and Theory of Public Administration course. This week, the four theories that I'll be covering are on Henri Fail and his 14 principles on management, Max Weber on bureaucracy, Frederick Taylor on scientific management, and Weber, Taylor, and Fail's classical management theory. So the first theorist that I'll be talking about is Henri Fail and his 14 principles of management. The source of information that I used, I retrieved from the principles of management video that was provided in week two's lecture. In this video, they talk about the development of the 14 principles of management um, from Henri Fail. These include division of labor, authority, discipline, unity of command, unity of direction, subordination, remuneration, centralization, scalar of chain, order, equity, stability of tenor of personnel, initiative, and esprit de corps. Fail saw six activities of industries that take to run an organization. They include technical, commercial, financial, security, accounting, and managerial. In the managerial, Fail saw a training and theory gap. His focus was on how to train people to be better managers. Looking at the 14 principles of management, this theory applies to my place of employment. The way the sheriff is ran, we have a division of labor, which is a chain of, chain of command for us. Starting from the bottom would be the professional and sworn staff. Then moving up would be the sergeants, lieutenants, captains, and then further up, um, we would go into like the commander, under sheriff, and then the sheriff himself. This would apply to the scalar of chain as well because this is a chain of command for us. Stability of tenor of personnel would be the training that both management and sworn have to take in order to obtain the position that they have. And in this video, when they talk about the esprit de corps, they mention identity. This applies to the deputies, in my opinion. Once um, being sworn into the department, this becomes like a commitment to protect and to serve the community. This becomes their identity for both while on and off duty. I believe that this concept does work in today's times and will continue to work because these 14 principles are needed in order to maintain an efficient and functional organization, um, whether it is in the private or the public sector. The second theorist that I'll be talking about is Max Weber and his theory on bureaucracy. Most of my information I obtained from the Max Weber bureaucracy video that we saw this week. Weber's approach on bureaucracy was that the hierarchy was made up of many specialized roles that were held together by formal written and communication. Weber saw a lot of traditional authority, and so he wanted more of a legal rational authority so that it would remove particularism from the organization. Bureaucracy has six different parts that include division of labor, hierarchy of offices, set of general rules to govern the performance, rigid separation of personal life to work life, selection of personnel on the basis of techni techni technician qualifications, equal treatment of employees, and the participants view their employment as a career and that they have the protection against unfair arbitrary dismissal. This theory applies to any public agencies that have a firm set of policies to follow. In the video, they talk about the way the DMV is ran and how they have a set of rules and guidelines to follow. Same goes to anyone who owns like a dog. If you have a dog, you must obtain a pet license to avoid any fines. There is no way around it. Those are the guidelines to follow. Working in the Sheriff's Department, if you have a significant other or spouse for the department, they should not work in the same office to help aid in the separation of personal life to work life. This again ties down to particularism. Bureaucracy is important and crucial in any organization. In order to run an organization successfully, the six points of bureaucracy must be implemented. The third theory that I'll be talking about will be on scientific management by Frederick Winslow Taylor. 
Taylor saw that this industry was traditional and not scientific. Um, Taylor stopped the clock and analyzed all the pieces to create efficiency. As a machinist, he studied and analyzed a job and created a more efficient approach. In page 36 of our book, Taylor states that the principles of scientific management when properly applied and when a sufficient amount of time has been given to make them really effective must in all cases produce far larger and better results both for the employer and the employees. This theory applies to any and all organizations to help improve efficiency. For example, in the private production sector, like a machinery company, back then, the employees would manually create parts using the machines. In some cases, these parts would have to undergo several lines of production before the final product is complete. In today's sector, using Taylor's theory of efficiency, CNC machines have been created so that the employees no longer have to do the actual labor of production and now all that has to be done is input the codes into the CNC machine and the machines do all the work. Not only does this create efficiency, but it creates productivity. Taylor's theory on efficiency works in not only the concept of work, but also in one's personal life as well. Finding a way to efficiently get the job done correctly, but in a shorter time is what we all strive for. The last theory that I'll be talking about is on classical management theory by Weber, Taylor, and Thale. This information was retrieved from the lecture video on classical management theory and some online sources as well. This theory is based on the belief that workers only have physical and economic needs. It focuses on the specialization of labor and leadership and decision making. The classical management theory consisted of Weber's theory on bureaucracy. Taylor's on scientific management and Fail's approach on administrative science. Altogether, this theory provided a clear structure for management, its functions and operations. It also provided a clear definition of the employee's roles and tasks. So in every department, both the private and the public sector, a person is hired on to that position based on their skills and their knowledge. When trying to promote in a position, you're selected for the position based on the skills and background required um, that's needed for that position. This approach alone fall, all falls back onto the classical management theory. This concept works in today's world because the division of labor makes the task easier and more efficient to accomplish, which then in fact, it enhances productivity. So this concludes my presentation on my four theories. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.